Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 292. Fire. 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 Incredible entrepreneurs share their inspiring journey with you every day on Entrepreneur on Fire. Prepare to ignite now. Here's your host with yet another amazing guest, John Lee Dumas. Entrepreneur on Fire. Entrepreneur on Fire. How to Fire Nation. Did you know that eVoice can forward business calls to your home, mobile, or any other number you choose, regardless of where you are? Go to eVoice.com, enter promo code FIRE for your 30-day free trial. That's eVoice.com, promo code FIRE. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Nikhil Zakadar. Nikhil, are you prepared to ignite? Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Nikhil is the CEO and co-founder of ViewClip. ViewClip is the world's largest independent mobile video company that reaches over 80 million people each month in more than 200 countries on any mobile device. Giving Fire Nation just a little overview, Nikhil, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you and then give us an overview of your business. Sure. Uh, John, first of all, it's great being on the show. I've been uh, listening to it for quite some time and I enjoy it a lot. Thank you. So uh, it's a privilege to be part of this. Uh, a little bit about ViewClip. We are, like you said, the world's largest independent mobile video and media company. We are used in 150 different countries worldwide and uh, consumers view us as the one-stop shop for video when it comes to their mobile devices. So we are to the mobile what YouTube was to the desktop. And we do this for the 4 billion people out there whose only access to the internet is through their mobile device. We have now grown to about 80 million monthly active users, and we think we've just touched the tip of the iceberg. Wow. So Nikhil, we're going to dive even more into ViewClip more in this interview, but I'd love to hear a little personal background about you. Tell us where you're from, what your life is like. Sure. I uh, grew up in India. I came here for my, I came to the U.S. for my master's and PhD, which I got at uh, Berkeley. And um, while I started um, going down the path of my PhD, I realized that there is a whole big entrepreneurial world out there. And I started my first company while I was still in school. Um, I am married, three kids, and uh, they keep me plenty busy. <laughs> I can only imagine. And Nikhil, you probably don't hear this from a ton of Americans because I am born and raised here in the USA, but I've spent four months traveling the entire continent of India, landed in New Delhi, went to Chennai, Madurai, Kerala, Goa, Hampi, Mumbai, Amritsar. I'm sure I'm pronouncing all those incorrectly, but I'm sure you can understand where I was. And then I went over to Kathmandu in Nepal for a month. So I love your country. Um, I was in a Bollywood film oh while my. I was in Mumbai. Yuv Raj with Katrina Kaif and Shah Rukh Khan. Oh my God, you've uh, met the two people that uh, most of us only dream of meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Katrina Kaif actually gave me a kiss on the cheek. I have the YouTube video. I'll post it on the show notes page. But Nikhil, this is about you. You're our spotlighted guest today. And I want to talk to you about one of your favorite success quotes that really keep you motivated, that really explains your mantra and mindset. So take it away. Sure. Mine is surround yourself with people smarter than you, whether it's at work or in your friend circle, because you always learn from everyone around you. You know, my wife is one of the smartest people I know. Uh, my closest friends have great wisdom that I've found invaluable in whatever I've done. And the team around me at ViewClip is full of uh, people that give me great advice when I need it. And uh, I've also seen the converse where when you don't have the best people around you, it shows up in your execution. So, Nikhil, you gave us a couple abstract examples about how you surround yourself with smart people, but take it down to the ground level. Share with us a specific example of when surrounding yourself by a person smarter than yourself was a huge benefit. I'll take uh, maybe a personal example. Yeah. Um, I met my wife when we were in ninth grade. And, uh, and uh, you know, she's always been someone who... Uh, has all, has been way smarter than me in whatever she did. And just being around her, I found that the level of my 
uh, thinking uh, uh, went up. So we uh, did our high school together. And uh, because of her, I got better grades. She kept me honest and she kept me uh, very diligent. Uh, and when I had questions or issues that I was dealing with uh, in my academics, she was always there. We then did engineering together. And uh, interestingly, though she was in a different department, uh, she was in electronics and I was in electrical. She uh, was my go-to person whenever I had doubts. And we then came to the US together. And uh, even there, every time uh, I, was, I ran into issues, she was my uh, go-to person to uh, get beyond that as well. And so uh, people, a lot of people uh, give me a lot of credit, but I know where the credit is due It's uh, <laughs> to her. Well, Nikhil, that's a very touching story. And I know that as an entrepreneur, you know, we have those moments. I'm sure you had them when you were in India, the ups and the downs. And then coming over to America is never easy, even with somebody as supportive and as intelligent as your wife. You obviously still hit those roadblocks that we all hit as entrepreneurs. So share with us a time when you just failed or Nikhil, when you faced a massive obstacle that you had to dig deep to overcome. And how did you overcome that? like every other entrepreneur, I've had enough of them. <laughs> and uh, they were all great learning moments. And I'll, I'll maybe take two examples, John. Yes. Um, the first one was I had, uh, I was finishing my PhD. I started my first company. And uh, we went through a period of great uh, ups, uh, more than downs. We were on NPR. We were, we had won the Berkeley Business Plan competition. We were funded. This was during the dot-com boom time right? 98, 99, 2000. Things were on a high. Um, I felt like I needed to get a CEO on board to learn from because I thought I'd taken this to the limit of my abilities. And I wanted to learn from a great CEO. So we uh, were able to attract some pretty top uh, level talent. And um, six months into hiring the person, I realized that uh, the CEO had some ulterior motives. He had started a company on the side that he was running in parallel with running our company. And, um, and he came to me one day and said, well, the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to acquire you into my company and uh, you are now going to be a small uh, piece of this big pie that I'm creating. And that was a super tough time for me because on one hand, I had brought somebody on board wanting to learn from, but everything he seemed to be teaching me wasn't what I thought was the right thing. And, uh, and it was a moment of great struggle. Uh, my, I spoke to various people around me and the general advice I got was, you know, if you do this, if you go ahead and sell your company to him, you would have uh, done a deal with the devil. On the other hand, if you don't, uh, your company is going to go down because if the company's CEO is gone, your uh, company's credibility will be questioned. And, you know, it was a tough time because I'd hired a few people. I'd asked them to leave their jobs and join us because the future was bright. But suddenly it all went downhill and uh, nothing looked very positive. And, uh, you know, I made the decision. It was a tough decision at that point in time. In retrospect, it seemed very easy. But at that point in time, I made the decision to not do the deal. And I said, we'll try and build this from scratch all over again. We did. Luckily, it ended up being a big success, but I learned the value of integrity. You know, if I had done the deal with the CEO who had who had been doing these things on the side, I would have uh, never been able to live with myself. And uh, the fact that it turned out well is a is a is a nice thing. But regardless, I think uh, I learned the value of doing the right thing. Nikhil, what a story. I mean, I'm pulling from that right now. Choose your mentors wisely, just like you should choose your employees wisely. You need to hire slow and fire fast. You need to not just jump in with any CEO or any mentor that you think is going to give you great advice. You really need to do your due diligence. Make sure that your best intentions are at their heart and what they're looking to do really lines up with what you're looking to do. And of course, you're never going to bat a thousand, but you need to do as much due diligence as possible. So it's a great message. And Nikhil, if you could just pull one clear lesson from that experience, what would it be? I think you hit the nail on the head, John. That summarizes what I took away. You know, it doesn't come, it comes down to 
the person's integrity and the chemistry and the match you have rather than their reputation out there because you know reputations can be built uh, using a pr firm potentially but your chemistry the integrity that you feel uh, comes through due diligence and uh, you need to do it love that and the last thing i really want to pull from what you were saying nikhil that i just love is you need to sometimes just follow your gut because honestly your instincts sometimes can tell you way more than your head can tell you and nikhil you followed your gut great things have happened so i commend you for that and it's a perfect segue now to go into the other end of the spectrum because yes failure and challenges and deceiving that's all part of being an entrepreneur on certain levels but we also have those aha moments those light bulbs that come on and we say wow this is really resonating with me, with my authentic self. Take us to that moment when you had one of those light bulbs go off, Nikhil, and how did you turn that into success? My co-founder in my first company uh, was um, also in my PhD research group. Both of us had never worked uh, in our home countries, nor had we worked after coming to the US. So when we started our company and we created a product, we were asked by one of our customers for um, a quotation and we had to come up with a price. And we didn't know what price to come up with. So I went to the business school library, brought a book on pricing and read it cover to cover and still couldn't figure out how to price it. Um, so then we sat down and decided maybe we should just charge $4,000 because that's the amount of money we had spent on uh, the company until that point in time. Um, then I was in Berkeley. I drove to uh, Santa Clara where the customer was uh, with the whole quotation and all of that. By the time I reached there, I had spoken to eight of my friends over the phone, asking them for advice. And each of them gave me a different piece of advice. The only thing I took away from it was, you know, software pricing only goes down over time. It, you can't increase it over time. So start high. And so by the time I reached Santa Clara, I uh, decided to change the price from 4000 to 50000 So 50000 five zero. Five zero. <laughs> and what was the highest that any of those eight contacts gave you as a number? 25,000. So I decided to double it. <laughs> <laughs> Nikhil, I love you already. Go ahead. And so I go, I ask the customer for his printer because I need to now change the number on my uh, quotation. I use his printer, change it from 4,000 to 50,000. Yeah, only by about 17,000%, not that much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and I hand it over to him and he looks at it and he exclaims, $50,000? Wow, at this price, I'll take two. Oh, MG. you would have embarrassed yourself. You probably would have thought that your product was crap if you would really charge $4,000. So that is such an aha moment, Nikhil. Yeah, it is. And it, was, it told me a couple of things. Number one, I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to pricing. And none of us do in the entrepreneurial world. <laughs> right. Maybe I should go higher. Uh, <laughs> number two is, uh, you know, you learn from things like this. Uh, and you evolve, right? And you figure out how to change your pricing based on that. So great. It's all, they are learning moments. Take them and learn from them. So I'm actually going to say that you increased your profits by $100,000 that day because, again, I do truly believe that perception is reality. If that guy had perceived you as creating a product that you were only going to charge $4,000 for, he would have lost faith in you. He would have lost faith in the product that you created. So you may have lost that sale overall. So that's just an incredible story. That's quite an aha moment. And Nikhil, let's just boil it down to one clear lesson that you learned from that experience. I think the biggest lesson I learned from that is, and I've seen this again and again, is, you know, nobody knows the right answer, right? A lot of people are experts in retrospect. Hindsight makes everyone an expert. But at that point in time, we're all working with limited data. Um, you go with your gut and uh, see what works. It, at the end of the day, I had I made a gut instinct call that it should be 50,000. And it worked out. It may not have, but in general, gut instinct calls work out pretty well. Love that, Nikhil. That's just great, valuable insights. I love when themes develop in Entrepreneur on Fire episodes. This theme, I can already tell, is the gut instinct. Follow it. I mean, it's just a great thing to do. And I do have a question for you that always gets a different answer from different guests. Have you, yeah. Nikhil, had an I've made it moment? Well, I used to have many of them. <laughs> but then <laughs> soon after, they were followed by, you know, holy crap, it's all over moment. Right. Uh, because in the life of a startup, there are lots of ups and lots of downs, oh, sometimes yeah. more downs than ups. Oh, yeah. And, and so, you know, I've learned 
over time that uh, they all balance out. So now I do a 30 second victory lap when things go well and a 30 second uh, RIP for each thing that we felt that felt like it was the end of the world. And then I move on. Right. And by 30 second RIP, does that rest in peace? Rest in peace for that one thing that apparently, you know, is going to end the company, right? <laughs> right. Everything feels like, oh, this is the end of the world. We're not going to, but it requires a 30 seconds. You put your head down, uh, say, well, you know, unfortunately it didn't work out, but the world is not going to come to an end. Let's move on. And listeners, we always get those feelings every now and then as entrepreneurs, that chicken little, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And guess what? You wake up the next day, the sun is shining, the sky did not fall. And no, everything may not be all well and good with your business, but you're still there. You still have all the experience and knowledge that you have. So drive forward, learn from that problem that you encountered and improve off of that. So great insights. I love to talk, Nikhil, at Entrepreneur on Fire about the journey because as entrepreneurs, we do have those ups, we do have those downs, and it's really hard to kind of steady ourselves. And you know, a lot of times people can't deal with the, the extremes, so to speak. How do you deal with the extremes? For me, John, what I've found is um, there are a couple of things that help me take my mind off thinking about work. And the three things are my kids, playing with them, spending time with them gives me a very different perspective. Uh, second thing is uh, I love playing poker. Texas Hold'em? Texas Hold'em. Ooh, we'll have to play some time. I love Texas Hold'em. Yeah, I played in the World Series of Poker about two years back. Okay, we will not have to play Texas Hold'em sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the third thing is uh, golf. Um, that, you know, I, I spend so much time trying to figure out how to hit that tiny ball up in the air. Uh, that uh, I don't have time to think about work. So I found three distractions that uh, take my mind off and it helps me have a different perspective about uh, things and about how to deal with the ups and downs. So Nikhil, share with Fire Nation how you feel they, the listeners, should view the journey from somebody who's been on a journey for some time now. If I look at my own journey from the time I started my first company to now Euclid is my fourth startup. Uh, I've seen that in the beginning, I was very highly strung you know, everything was the end of the world and everything was the next big thing. And what I realized is that nothing is ever the end of the world and nothing is ever going to make you successful the next day, right? Uh, I've heard so many times, wow, you're an overnight success. And the answer to that is yes, after I spent the first seven years building this up, after that, I was an overnight success. Um, so the biggest takeaway for me is if you can calm your mind into understanding and believing that this is a journey, you do what you, you know, follow your gut, uh, spend time understanding the business, spend time with people around you, that'll keep you focused on the right things versus getting caught up in the in things that you can't control. Nikhil, those are just great insights. And again, that theme that we've developed here is so valuable. Follow your instincts, follow your gut. One quick side note before we go into the next topic. I just pulled up your Skype profile. I didn't notice this before, but there you are. You're an avatar. You're holding some cards. You're at a poker table with a ton of poker chips in front of you. I should have known better than to challenge you to a game of Texas Hold'em. My bad. <laughs> no, I actually encourage a lot of people. You know, if you have 50 bucks, come, I'll teach you poker. <laughs> 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 I'm terrified right now. Okay, so Nikhil, I want to move into your current business right now, View Clip. Share with us, Fire Nation, one or two things that are just really exciting you about View Clip right now and start by telling us exactly what the company is and then move into what's exciting you. So View Clip, what we do is we provide the ability for consumers anywhere in the world to be able to watch videos on their mobile device. So we are sort of like a YouTube, but we make sure that we are focused only on the mobile device and we don't have a desktop presence at all. We are completely dedicated to those consumers for whom the mobile is the first or the only screen to watch videos. And there are four or five billion of them out there all over the world. And we ensure that whether they have a feature phone or a low-cost smartphone or a high-end smartphone, whether they're on a 2G network, 3G network, 4G network, 
we ensure that the video works well on their device. So that's effectively what ViewClip does. Now, the thing that's exciting for us in our business right now, and something we talk about at work regularly, is we are in the daily lives of 80 million monthly active users. Wow. And these users count on us to provide a great experience. You know, the like the famous uh, saying in the Spider-Man movie, with great power comes great responsibility, right? That's exactly how uh, I feel about what we do. Totally. We, we have 80 million people who count on us. We need to absolutely be responsible to uh, ensuring that we give them a great experience, that we work hard every day to wow them, and that they want to come back to us because we have become a habit for them in their daily lives. And that keeps us up all uh, at night trying to work on great uh, new experiences and features for them. And uh, we get up every morning excited about all the different things we need to do that day. And that is what gets us excited about our business right now. That's just great stuff, Nikhil, for so many different reasons and 80 million users, huh? I think we need to do a little dual campaign to introduce them to Entrepreneur on Fire. What do you think? Cross-sell. Cross-pollination, baby. We love it. So let's talk right now about your vision for the future because everybody and their mother and grandmother know that everything is going mobile. I mean, the numbers are just so obvious. The first thing people do in bed is wake up to their mobile phone, giving them the alarm. They open up their Gmail account. They look at some messages while they're still in bed. They jump on the subway or they jump in the car and they're still on their phone. That's where they're getting all of their messages. The world is moving mobile. There's no doubt about it. What is your vision for the future of Uclip? So John, for me, the future is as exciting on the mobile front as it is on the video front. And marrying the two makes it a great combination, mobile video. So like you said, mobile has become an integral part of everyone's life uh, today. And it's only going to become more and more so over the coming years. Similarly, video is something that everybody uses as the medium. I'll, uh, one interesting anecdote is you know, the number one search engine in the world is Google, but the number two search engine in the world is YouTube, right? And what is interesting to me is I have a 13-year-old son and he does all his search, not through Google, but through YouTube. The, there was this unfortunate Asiana plane crash uh, two weeks back and he went online and he researched using video using YouTube, every story that ever has come out about any plane crash. Similarly, when there is a new topic he wants to research, he researches it all through video. And I absolutely believe that the future generations are all going to be understanding, researching, uh, figuring out what they want to do using video as a medium. So if you take mobile and you take video, that is the future. And we want to be the one-stop shop for anybody wanting to do anything mobile video. So, Nikhil, just to put an exclamation point on that, it is so true for entrepreneurs as well. When I'm searching for something that I want on the internet, I'm sitting in front of my iMac. I mean, I have the capabilities to do any number of things that I want to do. But if I'm looking to learn how to do something, which I do multiple, multiple times a day, I go to YouTube and I look for a tutorial that shows me visually how to do that. I don't want to have to read three pages of text and then try to be matching it up with what I'm doing. I want to put a side-by-side -side video video of a tutorial and then me and the other window actually doing copying that video tutorial as a person is going through. That is the direction we're moving in towards. I'm really excited that ViewClip is leading the way for the mobile phone, Nikhil. And now let's break in to thank our sponsor. Fire Nation, some time in the living easy. Picture this, you're lounging poolside in the hot summer sun, screening calls, closing deals and making money. Sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? But how? With eVoice, of course. eVoice is a reliable voice service with all the advanced features of an expensive phone system packaged up for one low monthly cost. eVoice supports a variety of popular mobile devices, including Androids, iPhones and iPads, so you can use them anytime anywhere. They even have an app for each device. Because of this, Evoid provides a simple and convenient way to access messages on the go. But don't want to forward calls to your mobile phone? That's okay. Evoids can even forward business calls to your home or any other number you choose. 
Talk about peace of mind. Go to evoice.com, enter promo code FIRE for a 30-day trial. That's evoice.com, promo code FIRE. We've now reached my favorite part of the show, the lightning round. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions, Nikhil. And you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Sounds good. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? You know, my dad is an entrepreneur. And it is amazing. When I was growing up, I was sure I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. Uh, The reason I didn't want to be an entrepreneur is because I watched my dad. He would come home in the nights. He would be thinking about work. He would be stressed out about it. And yet every morning he got up and went back to work. And I just couldn't figure it out. And the reason I couldn't figure it out is because I hadn't found my passion. And he had. When I did find my passion, uh, when I was doing my PhD thesis and I hit upon the killer idea that I thought would change the world, I was suddenly very passionate about that. And without realizing, I started my first company. And then when I look back, it all became clear to me. You know, my dad had found his passion. That's what got him to get up every morning and do what he did. And when I found my passion, I did the same. What was your dad's passion? He built uh, forklifts and uh, pallet trucks that are used in factories to move equipment from one place to the other. And uh, he loved the mechanical engineering aspects of things. And I had absolutely no interest in mechanical engineering. Uh, so I, I couldn't figure it out. But like I said, when I found mine, I was I, I absolutely knew I wanted to do this. Fascinating. What is the best advice you've ever received, Nikhil? I got it from my uh, mom. Uh, she said, you know, learn from everything and everybody you interact with. You know, I've had great mentors, but I find that every conversation you have with people around you uh, teaches you something or the other that you did not know. And you just have to have an open mind. If you have an open mind and uh, you know what you don't know, you can absorb like a sponge. And, uh, and there is no better way to learn than from the world around you and people around you. What is one specific action listeners can take in the next 24 hours to bring them one step closer to their dreams? Maybe it's uh, something that they can do in the next 24 hours. Maybe they can't, but I think it's a process worth starting right away. Go find what gets you excited and up in the morning, ready to go. If you find that, you found what you should be doing. If you get up in the morning and feel like you're, you know, feeling lethargic, you're not, you've not found it. So go spend that time to find stuff that gets you excited. Nikhil, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? Actually, mine is something that I'm sure your listeners already use a lot. The thing I love is Skype and I use it. We have 10 offices around the world, um, all in almost every continent. And uh, I think I must be one of the power users of Skype. I must be probably <laughs> using it for about five, 600 minutes a day. You and me both. I have eight interviews today and you're number two. So I have quite a few more minutes that I'll be hanging out on Skype, Nikhil. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything else that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to entrepreneuronfire.com. Wait for it. Nikhil Zakatar. How'd I do, Nikhil, on that one? Excellent. Zakatar. Also, Fire Nation, go to eofire.com. Click on the podcast tab. Nikhil's name will be right there in the archives. So, Nikhil, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? It's one that I'm guessing many of your listeners have already read, but if they haven't, I highly recommend The Innovator's Dilemma by Clayton Christensen. Huh. You know, uh, I don't know, John, if you've read it, but it sheds light on what conditions allow startups to beat the big guys. You know, very often startups uh, are fighting against some big 800-pound gorilla in that space. And yet, very often startups end up winning. And then there are cases where startups don't. And when I did my first three startups, I did them intuitively. And they ended up all, touch wood, being very successful. But when I read that book, it gave me a sort of a blueprint as to what I had done right that I could beat the 800-pound gorillas and what, if I hadn't done or hadn't thought through, I wouldn't have beaten them. And so it allows you to more proactively think about what differentiation you should build into your business 
right from the beginning. So you have a chance to take on the big guys. Well, Innovator's Dilemma, that's the first time in over 270 plus interviews that that book's been recommended. So I can definitely guarantee that a large proportion of Fire Nation has not read that, me being one of them, but now it's on my to read list in Fire Nation. I know you love audio. So if you just want to listen to this book, go to eofirebook.com, get it for free if you haven't already done so, eofirebook.com. So Nikhil, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? I can only think of funny one-liners, but let me give a, (laughs) uh, you know, funny five-liner maybe, right? So, Let's see. I would, uh, you know, I love playing poker, like I said. So I would actually organize a poker tournament with entry fees, charging people entry fees, uh, and use my laptop to broadcast the tournament live in a pay-per-view mode. Uh, Make a good deal of money because I think people love watching poker on TV. Um, Love it. And so I'd make money through the entry fees. I'd make money through the pay-per-view. And... I use that money to seed fund the next startup I want to do, uh, which would be a great great example of mixing business with pleasure, this whole poker tournament thing. And then um, with that money in the bank, uh, I'll spend time talking to the people in this new world that I don't know of, uh, find a really good opportunity to uh, do my next startup in, uh, find a really good team to go after the opportunity. And uh, and that'll get me set to take on week two onwards in this new world. Okay, Nikhil, we see where your passions really lie here. It's obviously (laughs) Texas Hold'em. And we all know that you would have to install those little table cameras so people could see what everybody had around the table because that's when TV, Texas Hold'em really took off, when you could see the percentages, when you could see what people had before they were doing it. Critical part of that. Exactly right. So, Nikhil, I have so enjoyed hearing your journey Thank you for sharing that with Fire Nation and give us just one parting piece of guidance, then share how we can find you and then we'll say goodbye. Awesome. Uh, I guess the parting piece of uh, guidance would be, John, what you and I spoke about earlier, which is follow your gut. I mean, if there is one thing that I think is a consistent theme is follow your gut instinct. You will be right more often than not. Uh, in terms of where I can be reached, I am uh, on Twitter at India Jones, not Indiana Jones, but India Jones. Love it. <laughs> uh, and I can uh, be reached through our website, which is www.viewclip.com or via LinkedIn. And I would love to hear from uh, your listeners and get their feedback on what resonated, what didn't. Wonderful. Well, we will put this all in the show notes page eofire.com. Click that podcast tab. Click on Nikhil's name in the archives. All this great stuff will be there. Reach out to him, Fire Nation. He wants to hear from you. India Jones on Twitter. Love that. Nikhil, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, your experience. Fire Nation salutes you and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. 100% support, monthly webinars, giveaways, an annual meetup, a private forum, private email access to me, your success stories being highlighted on Entrepreneur on Fire. These are all the things you'll get when you join Fire Nation Elite, a tribe of like-minded individuals who have banded together to form a powerful community. Speaking from experience, this type of community is priceless. Find out for yourself by applying at firenationelite.com and schedule your 15-minute chat with me today. And now let's give it up for our five-star reviews. The great designer at irondaisy.com, Brandy Shea, Halal Dude, Vincent Nugent, Andrew Mason, John Ackley, Amish87, Jaluwick, Kyle K114, and eBustle88. Thank you so much for supporting Entrepreneur on Fire, and I look forward to thanking everybody who does the same.
and Fire Nation, last reminder for the episode, go to evoice.com, enter the promo code FIRE. You will not regret it. Thank you for joining us at entrepreneuronfire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.